as they say, uh, have mutated. There is a team of um, experts on birds and ornithology from France, uh, very distinguished Danish ornithologist who says, who found in, Ch in Chernobyl area very, very major disturbing findings that exactly the same is happening in Fukushima. In other words, the, these birds, for instance, cannot uh, migrate because they become exhausted and they don't come back, uh, and so on and so on. They find microcephaly, just like we do. They, they find uh, all kinds of instability, like random uh, spotted changes of fur, which are local mutations, of course, and so on and so on. Yes, and crooked wings and abnormal tail feathers, and also many of the male birds have looked at the, the swallows, barn swallows, are sterile. Right. Well, you see, that's a chapter of what's called planar uh, embryology or planar development. Plan is like the scale of a snake. They, you can pass your hand along one way and not lift those scales, and then the opposite way, they are all going to stand up. The same with the hair. You can pet, pet an animal along the slant of the hair or against it. That is a program, and this planar way gets disturbed. So you have worlds in the wrong place, like some children with microcephaly will have worlds in the wrong spot. And there'll be a world in the middle of the head or on the side, and we're accustomed to see only one in the upper posterior top of the head and so on. So there are all kinds of indicators of, of instability, among others, asymmetry. In other words, left and right are not identical twins, but they are very asymmetric, and so on and so on. And it's a, it's a, there are many ways to look at, at these questions, but uh, only a limited lifespan and, and resources. And what about uh, the disproportion when uh, uh, population is irradiated, there are fewer females born than predicted. Normally many more females are born than males in the human population, but in an irradiated population that proportion changes. Is that true? Well, of course. Well, uh, I don't know if it's true. Uh, I, uh, uh, okay. It's called the male-female ratio. Normally, it's 1.07. That is, there is 0 0.7 or 7% more females uh, than males at birth. That proportion, as you go backwards, changes. Uh, and um, nobody knows the proportion at conception. Then there are dogmas that say you lose more boys, so slowly the proportion of girls increases. Well, we know boys' mortality is way higher than the females. One of the, let's say, curiosities is stuttering. The stuttering has one of the strongest male-female disproportion. Boys stutter. If you find a girl that stutters, let me know. Mm. Okay, now that is a sign of let's say, disharmony, okay, or the inability to integrate. But in any event, we study uh, male-female proportion very much, and the female preponderance is dramatic in among the neural tube defects, more in anencephaly than spina bifida. So the more you go toward the head, the more females. Mm -hmm which may mean more males disappear. Mm. Second, we have more females with microcephaly. Nobody in the literature knows the proportion of male-female. I don't know why, uh, but uh, it's not in the literature. Maybe that's new or maybe that's everywhere, but I cannot find uh, supporting evidence anywhere else. But there it is. We have more females, just like neural tube defects. Mm. And there are virtually only females with conjoined twins. Oh, that's interesting. And then 
there are virtually only females with teratoma. That's interesting too. Right. So we have an independent track saying these things have something in common. And one of those things in common is female prevalence. And that is pointing out to perhaps one common mechanism. If not the cause, maybe the mechanism. Mm. And this is how epidemiology works. Now, in contrast, there is a sharp predominance of males that have the omphalocele, the open belly. Mm. Not so if they also have an open spine. If they have an open belly and spine, there is prevalence of females again. Mm. Now, you know, there are two X chromosomes of females. Boys have one. When you inhibit that one X chromosome, in order so the female would be like a boy, so they are balanced, that is when the axis is laid for the body. Mm. So abnormal inhibition of one X chromosome or delayed inhibition of one X chromosome may be actually the cause for twinning. Mm. And therefore of conjoined twins, and therefore of teratomas. How fascinating. And, there are many, and, and, and the X chromosome is so much larger than the Y, it piles up mutation. And having two, it doubles the dose. So it doesn't not only oh. pile up mutations, but twice as many mutations. Oh. And therefore, that may make the female brittle. But the facts are not there. So we have a choice, genetic theory or medical facts. Yes. And we choose medical facts. <laughs> this has been absolutely fascinating, and it takes me back to my first year in medical school in 1956 when we had uh, an embryology lecture called um, Dudley Packer. We used to call him Cuddly Dudley. And he used to lean on the blackboard and draw the embryo and the divisions and the neural tubes and etc cetera, etc cetera. and I'm reminded as we talk about my first introduction to embryology but your the discussion today has been absolutely fascinating and it has huge implications upon the uh, the nuclear regulatory commission and the ICRP and the and all the other the IAEA all of these huge United Nations organizations which determine how much radiation the human being can receive and none of this information or data is taken into their extrapolations and their standards that they set, is it? Well, there is not much data. You see, one of the nice things is to be able to say, well, uh, here is somebody did this, that or the other, and it is very difficult to say nicely and convincingly, nobody did that. Mm. And it's obvious mm. that it should have been done. Yeah. We started doing this in the year 2000. The accident of, of Chernobyl was in 1986. Yeah. It's 14 years yeah. later. Mm. You know, things ought to start before the accident. Yes. So congenital malformation monitoring is a security blanket for all societies. Mm. For instance, we had here the, the BP disaster. It's a horrible disaster. But the most common source of radiation in society is not uh, the pollution of nuclear power plants. It is coal-burning power plants. We, when we dig up Mother Earth and dig up her entrails, and bring it up to the surface. We don't bring coal, we bring everything else with it. Mercury, mainly, and radioactivity. When the power plant ends up burning that coal, not only does it pollute uh, the air, but the, and with mercury included, but also there is radioactivity in it. And one of the most radioactive dumping waste is that ash. Well, oil is the same thing. There is no oil without some mercury and some radioactivity. So we had 
enormous quantities of oil spilled up that is picked up by organisms and recycled and concentrated and each one who eats one the eats one eats one eats one and each one that eats concentrates more and more and more and more until the pregnant woman decides to have a good dinner on some kind of a marine product. Yes. So if we are interested if BP has consequences to the unborn and we don't have a congenital malformation system in place, we don't have a baseline. Mm. So we don't know if what we see today is 10 times bigger or not changed or even less. We have no idea where we sit at. We have no reference point. Mm, because we're not and each standing. society has birth certificates. And why not to make out of the birth certificate something valuable? Because right now it's worthless. Well, Dr. Wertelecki, we've reached the end of our time. You're a pioneer in medicine, and I so much appreciate the interview today, and I hope the audience take it all in and digest it and understand what you've been saying from a medical Well, tell the audience to send me a line. Yes. Okay. My guest today on If You Love This Planet was Vladimir Wertelecki, the founder and chairman of the Department of Medical Genetics and Birth Defect Center at the University of South Alabama in the U.S. and secretary treasurer of the World Alliance for the Prevention of Birth Defects. I thank you so much for listening today. Look, I know it was a little complicated, but I want you to listen and listen again. Take in these facts, absorb them, digest them, understand what we were saying as doctors so that you will understand what radiation, um, nuclear power and all the rest means to us and future generations. You can go to the website if you love this planet.org and download this um, program if you've just caught it on the radio and listen again and get all your friends to listen. Um, if you'd like to contribute to the programs, we'd be very grateful. There's a donate button on the website. And we'll be back with you again next week for another wonderful program. Bye for now.